Eric, Marianne, and Kathy, please come forward. My brothers and sisters, we are gathered here today as a parish family to witness before Almighty God the installation of new officers uh, of our parish committee. God provides for the church with suitable men and women to assist the pastor and the leaders of this congregation. Let us pray for these men and this man and this woman, woman, women that God may bless them as they undertake their roles of service to this parish. And now I ask that you please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, your name and office. I, Eric Devrenzi, Parish Committee Chairman. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Before Almighty God. Before Almighty God. And this congregation. And this congregation. That I will live. That I will live the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ. Support. Support. The Constitution. The Constitution. Of the Polish National Catholic Church. The Polish National Catholic Church. And bear true faith. And bear true faith. In allegiance. In allegiance. To the same. To the same. Under the authority. Under the authority. Of the bishop of this diocese. Of the bishop of this diocese. I will justly. I will justly, honestly, honestly, faithfully, faithfully, impartially, impartially, and conscientiously, and conscientiously perform, perform all the duties, all the duties of my office, of my office, according to the best, according to the best of my ability, of my ability. So help me God, so help me God. one of the blessed Trinity, one of the blessed Trinity, and all the saints, and all the saints. In the name of God and the authority of our diocesan bishop. I welcome you and install you in your new positions in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming. Advent begins the liturgical year of the Christian church calendar, which begins and lasts for four Sundays of anticipation of a longing before the celebration of Christmas. Each Sunday in Advent represents a thousand years of hope, longing, and anticipation of a Messiah which the great prophets of God foretold. From the prophecies of Isaiah through Jeremiah, from Daniel to Ezekiel, from Daniel to Malachi, the season of Advent has been set aside as a time of preparation since the sixth century. Advent is a time for preparing for Christ's second coming, even as we remember and celebrate his first coming at Christmas. This is why the color of the season the season of Advent is purple, which symbolizes forgiveness and repentance. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the first Sunday of Advent in which we recall the hope we have in Christ. God foretold Abraham that through him all nations of the world would be blessed because he trusted and put his hope in God. The Old Testament speaks of the coming of Christ, of how a Savior would be born, a king in the line of King David. He would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. We too believe in God's promise to send Jesus again to this world to establish his kingdom upon the earth.
Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look upon the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope we all have in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God of Abraham and Sarah and all the patriarchs of old, you are our Father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth, to make our hearts ready and to place our hope in you. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word and to do your will by sharing your hope with others. We ask this in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord, our God. participate in this holy sacrifice and now please make an examination of your conscience and now let us recite the second act of confession I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I wait for you, O Lord. I lift up my soul to my God. In you I trust. Do not let me be disgraced. Do not let my enemies gloat over me. No, 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus, promised to return to us in the fullness of time. As we hear his word, prepare us for his coming. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our, our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced, the day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. God rules over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. Alleluia, Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim this holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. said to his disciples as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man in those days before the flood there were eating and drinking marrying and given giving into marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark 
They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So it will be. Out in the field. One will be taken, the other one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore stay awake. For you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too you also must be prepared, for at the hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. Words taken from today's reading from Isaiah the prophet. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. Words taken from the prophet Jeremiah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Today, we begin a new liturgical year in our Christian Catholic tradition. And on this first Sunday of Advent, we will hear a new cycle of readings that when heard and reflected upon, should give us a deeper understanding of our relationship with God. We have the uniqueness as members of the Polish National Catholic Church to have the Word of God as one of our sacraments. We learn from our catechism that a sacrament brings about sanctifying grace, which means that the Word of God brings about a deeper holiness in the heart and mind and soul of an individual. So let us begin this journey. From man's fall in the Garden of Eden, there was a deep longing of man to be united again, one with God. Today, this longing is represented in our Advent wreath, which has four candles. Each candle represents approximately 1,000 years of this longing. The first candle that we light today represents hope. Hope that God would send his people a deliverer, a messiah, the Christos, the anointed one, who would make things right with God and bring man back into the fold back to the allegorical Garden of Eden. In these next four weeks, we will be introduced to the main characters of the Advent story. First, there were the prophets, who were God's spokesmen, who spoke about the coming of a deliverer. 
Then there is John the Baptist, who would be a witness to this eternal light, who would take upon himself this Messiah, the sins and the offenses of mankind once and for all. Finally, there is Mary, who would give birth to this Deliverer through the Incarnation by the Holy Spirit that became the Word which was made flesh, Jesus, as the angel told Joseph, Jesus, God's Anointed One. We read today from Isaiah the prophet that God would fulfill the promise that he made to the house of Israel, Jerusalem, and Judah. We learn in the Old Testament that Israel became a divided nation following the reign of King David. We also read in the Old Testament that God would unite these two kingdoms under one Messiah, one shepherd. It was God's promise, first made to Abraham, that would pass from generation to generation, from Abraham, through Isaac, through Jacob, and finally upon Jesus. From the house of David and the root of Jesse, who was David's father. Yesterday, we celebrated the Feast of St. Andrew. For me, one of the most favorite scripture passages in the New Testament is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 40 and 41, where Andrew, a disciple of John the Baptist, goes to his younger brother, Simon Peter, and says, We have found the Messiah. Can you imagine how excited Andrew must have been when he declared to his brother, we have found the Messiah. Now there were others who came before Jesus who claimed to be a Messiah. But when Jesus called Andrew and the others, they knew that this was the Messiah, the fulfillment of the Old Testament and all its prophecies. And what did they do? They left everything. Everything behind their livelihood, their families, and they follow Jesus without being asked a second time. So much pain, so much struggle, so much adversity in the history of the Jewish nation. From the time of deliverance of the children of Israel by Moses in Egypt, through the destruction of Jerusalem, and the temple the first time in 587 BC by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon to the occupation of Rome, there was always a deep longing for that promise by God to be fulfilled. <clears throat> and so, my brothers and sisters, the first candle represents hope. Now, hope is defined as a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. We know, trust, and believe in our faith that this expectation and desire was fulfilled. It is my hope that this Advent season may be a time where each of us grow in our faith as we hear the story of our salvation as told by the Holy Scriptures is fulfilled and may each of us during this season of Advent rededicate ourselves to walk closer with God. May this new liturgical year be a year in which we all grow to know personally more closely our Savior, our Deliverer, and be illuminated 
by the light of his grace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive. This offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in the remembrance of the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension, of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation, 
May they, whose memories we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, merciful Father, you taught us in your holy word that the night is exhausted and the day is approaching. May we who offer this oblation awaken to live as children of the light and of the day. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. For through the promise sending of Jesus Christ to earth, you revealed your goodness and unending love sharing in the hope of the patriarchs and the prophets, may we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming of the Messiah into our hearts. Therefore, we join this day with the voices of the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and all your angels, with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of the Divine, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son of the Divine. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy catholic church that you would guide it in peace defense and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests especially Anthony, our prime bishop and paul our bishop and all who profess the true orthodox and catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles remember your servants O lord And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise of themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ the day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love draw them to himself make them joyful and save them he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people at that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family our savior took bread 
into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of the immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not to wing our merits, but pardon our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching. At him following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Yeah. 
Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all despair. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you, do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ Bring me to everlasting life. Amen. shall I return unto the Lord. For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we give thanks for the gift of your Son, who comes to us in this heavenly mystery. Hasten the day that when he comes again to judge the world, that we might be prepared for his coming. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effected for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the light, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, I welcome you to church this day. I bring to mind some of the announcements. I first of all wish to thank Peg Kostchik, Alice Majewski, and Pat Blakesley, along with my brother Wayne Shaw, who not only changed the altar linens, but as you see around the church, were able to hang the the uh, the purple, uh, which during the season of Advent we have done throughout the years. I bring to mind also, um, donations are being accepted for Christmas flowers. Uh, donations uh, can be made in memory of not only the individual themselves, but also in memory of loved ones who have passed. Uh, there is more information on the bulletin about that. And I thank Peg for, for taking care of this. Uh, donations will be accepted in the vestibule of our church. Um, we are so blessed. Our, um, we've been selling a lot of pierogi. And uh, I guess it's, it's a good uh, quality because every time we turn around, there are more and more. And 
I wouldn't be surprised that by the third week of December, if there is any that will remain. So again, pierogi are available. Um, Opotic can also be found in the back of the church. And I also um, had words of appreciation. I did not include it in the email I sent out last night, but it is in the bulletin today. Words of appreciation for all our parishioners and friends who came to uh, make the, the pierogi for the Advent season. Adopt the family. Um, I'm very happy to announce that all four teams have been um, named along with their respective leaders. Um, I am appreciative for the donations already accepted. Since we have four families, we have called upon each of the standard societies of our parish to become involved. Um, also in the back of the church, there is a description of each team and the, the needs of each of the families that have been assigned. Uh, let me see, what else? Uh, I think, I think um, Barbara, I think it was mentioned that this coming Wednesday there will be a choir rehearsal. Correct. And that will be at? Um, 9.30. 9.30, okay. I'm going to be away, I'm going to be away uh, from the parish uh, officially from Tuesday until late Thursday. God willing, I will be back here by Friday uh, for, for Holy Mass, but that's still a matter of, of the travel. Please stay warm. Be careful because I heard there is a storm that is going to be coming in. You don't know how, it, how bad it's going to be, but the forecast is that we're going to get snow as well as freezing rain. Peg. Thank you, Peg, for that correction. Um, yes, Linda. I just want to say a couple of things for the adopted family, and I thank everybody who's team leading in, in the group. Um, the schedule is going to be, we need to get the stuff over to the adopted family group on the 19th. So what we want to do is collect everything on the 15th, and Eric and I and Father are going to get together the morning of the 19th and we'll, we'll get everything together. The teams, uh, we are getting cash donations and I've had questions in regards to, you know, how do we do that and can we designate for each family? I've had one person say, I want to get gift cards, one for each family. So if they can either give them to the team leader or they can give them to me and I will get them to the team leader so that the team leader can keep track of what they have. Um, the donations that we have so far, we've got enough to get four $100 gift cards to Walmart. So we will get that and get those to the family. So those to the group, the team leaders, so that the team leaders will have everything that they need to have and they can bring it in. The team leader will need, if, they're buying, if people are buying presents and they need to be wrapped, the team leader will organize the wrapping with either within their team or they will wrap them. They will keep the presents, the team leader will keep the presents with them until the 15th and bring it because we don't want to just leave stuff downstairs because we have other people, other people downstairs. Um, so I guess it's the 15th. If anybody's got any questions, all donations are appreciated, whether you want to get gifts. I know that I brought in what a uh, uh, sheet of paper or what we've received so far from the teams. We have um, the two kids have um, pledged some toys and stuff like that. I put that on for their team as Team Free. Uh, they wanted to donate to Family Free. So if anybody's got any questions or I can help anybody do anything, so on the 15th, we'll have gifts, we'll have gift cards. We may, we may even have 
have cash left over. If we, if somebody within your team gives you cash and designates it for a certain type of gift, you, you would take that cash and go to the store and buy that thing. Because I know that's what has happened in the past. People have given cash and said, I want, you know, and then the team decided, here's the hole, so we're going to fill with that. So if anybody's got any questions, I'll answer them. If not, thanks. Thank you, Linda. And you, you know, just one of the teams is actually the, what we call the YMS of R, the Young Men's Society of the Resurrection. If you are not a part of the YMS of R, we do call upon the men of our parish to become a, a part of what will be taking place with Team 3. Uh, and Eric is the, the team leader for that. So again, if you're not an official member of the YMS of R, we would still love to have all the men come together. And it was so perfect that with the four teams, it was only right that we would consider and asking the four standard um, societies of, of our parish to become involved. Instead of going to individuals and say, would you like to be a part of my team? Would you like to be a part of my team? This way we basically have divided it among the societies. Linda. And one more thing about the teams, just because it's within the teams, there are people, I, there's quite a few people that have bought for all four families, so you will, it, you know, even though you're part of that team, there are people donating to all the teams. We just, it's just a way of organizing it, not necessarily that's who you buy for. And you know, I pointed out to Linda that two of the things that are most important, first of all, the gift cards. And we've already received uh, gift cards where each family right now will be receiving $100. That's just starting. The other thing that is important is that there is a gift card because if you look at the profile of each family, each family has requested either Stop and Shop or the Big Y as their main place of shopping. And so not only the gift card, say for an example to Walmart, but also we would like to, in talking with Libby Kolashinsky, that we would like to have a gift card for each of the families with their respected um, um, place of, of shopping, whether it be the Big Y or, or stop, stop and Shop. This way they're not only getting the gifts, like at Walmart, but also at the same time that they would be able to buy their food for their family for celebration of Christmas. Are there any other announcements? Then again, I thank for all the people that are being a part of this. This is a way for our parish to come together and for us to reach out to others that are not necessarily a part of our parish, to have them become a part of our societies. Um, there's also, following this morning's Mass, there is a meeting of the Ladies' Adoration Society of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Okay, I exhausted my my talk for the week. God bless you. Watch over all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, And for our faithful departed, each other rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.